It was another night of babysitting, and I was watching three kids for a family in a creepy old house. I got off the phone with Ruth, the mother, and she said she needed a babysitter because she and her husband would be going to meet with a consultant to finally decide on some much needed repairs to the outside of their new old house. After that, they were going to go out and have a night together. Out of curiosity, I asked her how bad the house was and why. She explained that they had purchased the house in a short sale. She assured me that the house was not going to be dangerous, but when I saw it, I might be a little concerned. She said, please don't worry. I was starting not to like this deal, but didn't want to be rude to Ruth. I looked up the address on Google. It had a history. There was a murder there. Not recently, but it did happen about 17 years ago. The house had passed from family to family until it became the property of Ruth and Dan Schaefer. As I was reading the various stories about the house, it seemed that there were a lot of rumors that it was haunted. Looking at the house from the outside was very troubling for me. It looked terrible. The wood siding was rotting. The gutters were dislodged and hanging out from the house. The grass was high and unkempt. The driveway had large potholes. What a mess, I thought. I walked in, and it was actually pretty nice on the inside. I was very surprised. It seemed like they had already began doing some repairs to the house, starting from the inside. There was fresh drywall and paint on the walls, new carpet, and some demolition done in the kitchen. They had obviously stopped at the kitchen and were in the process of fixing it. Okay, so not perfect, but in way better condition than the outside of the house. The story was definitely adding up. I talked to Ruth as they were preparing to leave. They gave me their number and told me to call them if anything came up. I told them I would. I met all the kids, Joey, Annabelle, and Samuel. They were all really nice and sweet kids. I guess this would be fine. The kids and I hung out for a little bit, playing games and talking. I asked them how they liked the house. They said it was ugly on the outside, but the inside was a lot nicer than when they first moved in. Everything was fine, except for the noises they kept hearing when no one was there. I asked them about the noises. They told me that sometimes they would hear lights turn on and off upstairs. When they would go up to look, the lights would be off. They would investigate, and no one would be there. A few dishes had fallen on the floor in the kitchen as well. Sometimes the door would shut in different rooms. Things like that. I felt concerned, but had not seen anything myself, and I didn't want to either. As I settled the kids for the night, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching me. The stories the kids told me were making me have some anxiety. I was all alone now and looking around at everything that could make some sort of noise. I was really paranoid. However, nothing was happening. I started watching TV, waiting for the parents to come home. I was just counting down to 2 a.m. and it couldn't happen any sooner. As I tried to ignore the eerie feeling, something started to happen. I heard a strange noise coming from the attic. It sounded like a low growl, like a big dog. Did they have a dog? I did a lap through their downstairs to see if they in fact did have a dog that I just had not seen. However, there was no dog. I looked in the backyard. There was no dog. I still heard the growl though with a louder tone now. I looked upstairs to try and isolate where the sound was coming from, but could find no resolution to the sound. As I was upstairs investigating, I heard a door open downstairs. It was the front door. It barely opened, but something opened it. The wind was howling outside and could have pushed it open if it wasn't latched properly. As I closed the door and made sure it was locked tight, I heard a dish break in the kitchen, out of my sight and around the corner. It broke directly in front of the sink. I entered the kitchen and saw the broken plate on the floor. I bent over to pick it up and threw it in the trash under the sink in front of me. I looked up and I swear I saw a shadowy figure pass by the reflection behind me in the window. I spun around and looked behind me, but nothing was there. Suddenly, I heard loud footsteps going up the stairs. I ran to the living room, looking at the stairs, and saw nothing. The footsteps continued up the stairs. It was going towards the children's room. I ran up the stairs and saw the kid's door swing open so violently that it broke the door off its hinges and collapsed. 
the kids screamed at the top of their lungs. I threw the door out of the way and tried to turn the lights on with no luck. The kids were illuminated by the hallway light slightly and I could see them. They were all pointing at the corner of the room to the left side where I was standing. They said, there's a man standing right there in the corner. I immediately grabbed the kids and ran out of the house. I got the kids into my car and called the parents. The parents said, it's okay, and they would be there soon. When the parents arrived, they got the kids out of the car and gave them some hugs. They told them it was going to be okay, and they had just seen a ghost. It couldn't hurt them, so it wasn't a big deal. They told me the family would be moving out soon after the repairs were done. I was so shocked. Ruth pulled me away and talked to me away from the kids. She said that the place was definitely haunted and they had seen plenty of paranormal activity. They got the house for pennies on the dollar though and they were going to be set for life if they could fix it and sell it. They just couldn't figure out how to get the ghosts out yet. They apologized to me for not saying anything and gave me an extra 200 bucks. As I walked away from the house, I could see sweet Annabelle's teary eyes waving a sad goodbye to me as the front door was slowly closed by her mother. It was so sad. I understand that it's good to set your family up financially, but there's got to be a better way than this. I was heartbroken, but slowly returned to my car and drove away. I never returned to the house. I hope the kids were not scarred for life after that. Everyone wants the best for their family. Just make sure what you're doing does not have a negative consequence that will undermine your goals. It was a simple babysitting gig for some of my regulars, Sue and Bill. I just loved their kids and always had a great time watching them. They lived in a quiet neighborhood and it was gated for that extra sense of security. I went there so often that I had their gate pin memorized. We all had started watching a movie and eating some chocolate popcorn, which is popcorn with a little bit of Hershey Kisses thrown in the bag when the kernels are still hot. It is just a silly thing to do, but my babysitter did it with me when I was young, and I tried it on them. They loved it. Everything seemed to be going smoothly until the phone rang. They had a landline phone. I had not seen one of those in a while and did not know that people still had that. As I answered it, I heard heavy breathing on the other end. I said hello to get the mouth breather to say something. There was more breathing that was disturbing me the more I heard it. I demanded to know who it was. Finally, there was a voice on the other end that responded to me, but it did not say anything that I wanted to hear. The person on the other line said, I'm watching you. Horrified, I quickly hung up the phone and tried to shake off the feel of unease. The kids were still watching a movie but now I had a new secret that they did not know about. Should I tell them or not? I slowly moved around the downstairs of the house and closed all the shutters and curtains I could find. I made sure the front and back doors were both locked as well. I did not know if I should call the parents. Nothing like this has ever happened to me before. I eventually decided I would call them though and let them know someone was calling the house trying to scare us. As I went for the phone to call the parents, the phone rang again. This time the voice said, don't hang up on me again. I told them, okay, but I wanted to know what they wanted. Suddenly there was a loud knock at the door. The voice said, open the door. I told them no. They got very mad suddenly, but then tried to calm down. The voice said that he knew that I was the babysitter and had nothing to do with the situation but demanded that I open the door and let him have the kids. They were the collateral that the dad had agreed to for a deal that went bad. I told the voice that that was not going to happen. As I was talking to the voice, one of the kids went towards the door to open it after they heard the knock. I screamed and ran towards the door as quickly as I could. One of the kids unlocked and opened the door and it busted open, revealing two large men. One of the men saw me running and screaming towards the door and knocked me out, using my momentum to give me a harder hit. I woke up on the floor to the police filling the house and the parents freaking out. They saw that I was finally conscious and begged me for an answer about where their kids were. I had a huge black eye and a headache. 
Disoriented, I got up and sat on the couch. I looked at the parents and told them what happened. When I got to the part about the kids were collateral, the dad looked visibly shaken. He had realized what he had done. He had partnered up with a client for a business transaction. When the transaction went south, the client lost a lot of money, and the dad was determined to make it right. He promised his client he would fix it. He just wasn't fast enough. His kids were never found. The police have been searching for the kids for two years now with absolutely no luck. They went to investigate the client, and they could not find him anywhere. His previous offices were abandoned with no trace of his identity. I have been distraught about this situation. I can't imagine what happened to my favorite kids in the world. When you are a parent, don't be greedy. Your kids are the most important thing, not money. Don't lose yourself in a deal and end up losing everything. I was babysitting for a family with four young children and everything seemed to be going fine until I noticed that one of the kids, Josie, was missing. We had just played a game of hide and seek but had finished a while ago. I had not noticed the fourth child was missing until we were halfway through the crudes too. I was shocked and a little scared. I told myself to calm down. Maybe Josie was just not in the living room. Maybe she went to the bathroom and I just didn't notice. There was no reason to panic yet. Let's do a little searching first. So I started looking. I looked in the kitchen with no luck. I looked in the closet bathroom and saw no child. The light was off too. I looked in the coat closet downstairs with no luck. And then I started to think, did I account for the kids after the game of hide and seek? I can't remember. Now I'm starting to panic. Now I was concerned that Josie had tried to find a really good hiding spot outside. With this new information, I jumped up and ran out the front door. I looked all over the yard and in the bushes. I started looking under the cars. I hate when kids hide under the cars. I always tell them not to do that. What if someone is in a hurry, just jumps in their car and speeds off to the store? They won't know anyone is under their car. No one is looking for that. Thank God I did not find Josie under any of the cars. I had gone about 50 feet in all directions from the house, looking under cars and was satisfied that Josie was not hiding under any of them. I went back in the house and looked at the upstairs bedrooms. I don't know why I had missed the upstairs bedrooms initially. I guess I was just panicked. I did not find her. I searched the entire house and couldn't find her anywhere. There was only one more place to look. The backyard. I went out there as quickly as I could and looked in the trampoline, in the doghouse, and even under the house through an opening that I found. There was some evidence that someone had gone under there recently. Just as I was about to call the police, I heard a faint voice coming from under the crawl space. I finally found her. She had snuck out of the house and hid in the crawl space. The problem is that she fell asleep waiting to be caught and I never found her. I breathed a sigh of relief and made sure to keep a closer eye on the kids for the rest of the night. If you're ever babysitting and playing hide and seek, make sure you find all the kids. You never know when they might be hiding forever. Hey, Spooky Sooner here. I was gone for a little bit, but now I'm back. Um, we got these babysitter stories. Uh, we also uh, created already the Dates from Hell and the Offer Up stories. Uh, we will be uh, working on some more stuff, so stay tuned. Uh, thanks for walking. Walking. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe. Thank you very much.